So today is when we start proofs. Okay, we're going to start really basic. So when you see um, the word mini proof, they're about two to three lines. We're going to get to proofs that can range probably from eight to 12 or more lines in a proof, but that's going to come towards the end of um, maybe not first semester, but a second semester. Okay. We're also going to take a look at angle pair relationships. Um, today we're going to focus on two parallel lines cut by a transversal, which I know you saw maybe in seventh grade, but the alternate interior, alternate exterior corresponding, that's all coming back. So to start, we're given this diagram of plane P, or if I wanted to name it another way, it could be plane AHB, plane FHJ, plane A EJD. They just have to be three non-collinear points, okay? When you look at a diagram, you can never assume anything to be true, okay? It has to be marked. Now, I shouldn't say you can't ever assume anything because you can, um, or from the diagram, rather, we know some things to be true always in a couple different scenarios or cases. So using the diagram to the right of plane P, I want you to circle the statements we actually can assume to be true based on what's marked and what's not marked. If you have a highlighter, you can highlight some of the angles. So just on your own, take a minute. I'm going to highlight some angles up here in color. Circle the statements that we know to be true without anything marked. So you're going to do that on your own, and I'm going to highlight some angles up here. All right, in the left-hand side, can we tell from the picture that all points shown are coplanar or in the same plane? Yeah. yeah. What about the points A, J, H, and D? Are they collinear or on the same line? Yes. Do we know that lines, so these two are side by side. I know one's in the other column when we're looking at the left side. But can you tell whether or not those two lines intersect or do not intersect? Or you do know for sure? Those two lines are right here. So BF is right here. How do you know they don't? I mean, one, what, what if one was off like a half of a degree? Two lines can intersect in the same plane, yeah? Well, the plane, by definition, extends infinitely, right? Um, so they could intersect in the plane. But the fact is that nothing's marked, right? Um, from middle school, I don't know if you remember, to indicate parallel, you remember the arrows along the line? So because there's no arrows there, I don't know if they are parallel. They're not parallel. Right? Um, or we can't actually assume, like something has to be there to tell us. Okay? Um, so those should not be circled. In green, so I'll highlight them again to make them pop out, are these two angles right here congruent? Do you know that for sure? No. Um, do we know in orange that these two angles here form a linear pair? Yeah. Let's go up the next column. Are the two angles in pink vertical angles? So these two angles right here? Yeah, those are vertical angles. Do we know that these two lines are perpendicular? That statement there. What would have to be put there just like we'd have to see the arrows for parallel in order for AD to be perpendicular to BF? This is BF, right? I've got so many lines. In order for this to be happen, what do they have to what do they have to put here? No yeah, the box. So since that's there, we don't know for sure. Can we tell that these three points are collinear? 
No, there's no line there. Maybe they are, we're not quite sure. What about um, A, D, and B, F? Do they intersect at H? Yes. Okay, so these two statements right here, you just need to be given a picture of two intersecting lines to know that you have a linear pair or vertical angles. Nothing needs to be marked. So when we take a look at statements and reasons for proofs, as I mentioned, the writing piece, so hopefully you did do the reading, a proof is a logical argument, and I am going to be a stickler about how it's written up. So it needs to be written as I have here. Okay, so these are some of the statements and reasons for a proof. In your reading, I told you the format was a two column proof. So a T chart with the statements on the left and the reasons on the right. And we number them in order so that whatever you write for statement one is backed up by reason number one. Statement number two is backed up by reason number two. So whenever you're given two intersecting lines, so let's put a one, a two, a three, and a four there. I would suggest you number the angles when you can and not refer to them with the three letters or the vertices. So what I know here from this picture is that angle one is congruent to angle three, and I know that angle two is congruent to angle four. I also know what's true about one and two or two and three, or three and four, or four and one. They're supplementary. I put that down in this picture. So I know that A and B are supplementary. Just to write it in two separate lines, because they have two reasons. Now, one and three and two and four, so when you write a proof, your explanations or reasons, they need to contain the vocabulary, okay? What are the names of angles, or the angle pair, one and three and two and four? The ends of the V, vertical angles. So this is true because all vertical angles are congruent. So you can't abbreviate. However, if you can replace the symbol for the word, replace the word with a symbol, then you're good. Okay, so you can use symbols in your write-up. And then what's the reason why A and B are supplementary? Using vocab, what's the name of that angle pair? Begins with an L. Linear pair. So we can say all linear pairs are supplementary or just linear pairs are supplementary. Okay, questions so far? All right, I'm going to uh, move it up so we can see the last two. So take a look at the next row. We're given some angles that are not adjacent, but they tell us that one and two are supplementary, and three and two are supplementary. And then down below, it's very similar. It's just instead of supplementary, they're using complementary. So based on the fact that one is supplementary to two, and three supplementary to two, what can you conclude? No? Yeah. One and three are, now when you're referring to the angles themselves, we want to use congruence. So I'm going to want to box that because that's the same. Yeah. We know that angle one is congruent to angle three. So in, like, numerically, and I'll make this easy, if this was 150 degrees, what's angle one? 30, because if they're supplementary, their measures have to add up to 180. And then what's the measure of angle three? If that's supplementary to, two, or supplement to angle two, 30, okay? So what's the reason why they're congruent? Using the vocab. You want to try? Yeah, We're, I'm just gonna. You can say it that way, or um, supplements, right? Because if an angle and another angle add up to 180, they are supplements. So supplements of the same angle. And we're gonna add in parentheses or congruent angles. 
Because you could be given two congruent angles, so if they have the same measure, then their supplements are going to be also uh, congruent. So supplements of the same angle are congruent. And then what do you know to be true in the last row? If 4 and 5 are complementary and 6 and 5 are complementary, they're complements of the same angle, so they, what must be true about 4 and 6? They have to be congruent. So angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. For the same, uh, the reason is very similar, it's just instead of supplements, we're going to say complements. or congruent angles are congruent. So on the back of this page, um, we're more or less, we're not going to prove the vertical angle theorem, which states all vertical angles are congruent. Um, we're going to explain why that's true based on this. And it's only two steps. And when I say steps, when I explain, I don't like to write in paragraph form or in complete sentences, and you don't have to. So when I explain, I'll often um, explain in a T-chart format. Um, I'll put my statements over here and reasons there or back it up. So why do we think or how can we explain why angle 1 is congruent to 3 using the reasons on the previous page? Yeah. Yep, yeah, and they are always congruent, but we're, we're explaining why that's true. So we don't want to use that reason. We know that's true. Yes, all vertical angles are congruent, but we're explaining why that's true. Why are they congruent? Yeah. Yeah, they're both supplementary to angle two. So we want to break it up. So why are they supplementary to start? So why are one and three supplementary and three and two supplementary? So that's where I want to, so three and two are supplementary and angle one and three, or I'm sorry, one and two So I want to say they're supplementary first, and then yes, I can say um, that angle one is congruent to angle three because of what you just said, John. So supplements of the same angle are congruent. So what's the reason why first that they're supplementary? What's the vocab? They're what type of angle pair? Yep, but we don't want to say 180, we want to use the vocab term, linear pairs. So linear pairs are supplementary. And that's it. The algebraic properties were in your reading. So were they, uh, you remember those from Algebra 1 when you solve an equation, you have to use the properties of equality. Um, in geometry, we have uh, properties of congruence. So what that means is, and it says congruent quantities because we can add segments, we can add angles. You don't have to write the of congruence. You can just write addition property, subtraction property. We don't use multiplication property, or I haven't seen it. Um, and the two new ones would be reflexive and substitution. Reflexive states that a quantity is congruent to itself. And we'll see that on the next page or why we even need something like that. And then substitution property is a quantity may be replaced with its congruent quantity. So now, taking a look at how we see them in proofs and then a couple mini proofs. 
So the first one at the top is how I'm, I'm going to show you what reflexive means or how we use reflexive property in a proof. Okay, so it says any angle or any segment is congruent to itself. So I'm going to look at angle one. And it's just simply angle one is congruent to angle one by the reflexive property. So again, there's no abbreviating. So we do have to write it out. And we use the reflexive property with addition and subtraction. Okay, so if you have highlighters, this is what I want you to highlight below. So we know in this case that angle, they're telling us that PXQ is congruent to SXR. So let's highlight PXQ in one color and then SXR in another color. Okay? What I, and usually they tell you this, when I, what we're going to prove is that angle PXR is congruent to angle QXS using the addition, as you can see here, we're going to use the addition property to do that. Okay, we add straight down. So what do I add to PXQ to get PXR? What do we add to PXQ, this is angle addition from unit one, to get um, PXR? Maddie? We need three letters. Yeah, Parker? QXR. So if I want um, this angle right here, PXR would be this whole thing, right? I started with, I'm starting with the orange. So I have the orange and I want the whole green, I need to add this part. Does that make sense? So I'm going to get rid of that. So I need to add angle QXR. And then on the right side, what do we add to S at SXR to get QXS? What do we add to S, that pink angle, to get QXS? John? RXQ again. That's the same angle, right? We have to add the same angle, so angle QXR, and we need to bring down that congruency symbol. So if we add the same angles to both the angles, um, the angle congruent to itself is the reflexive property. So that's why we need an angle congruent to itself in order to add two angles together or subtract. Okay, so if you have two highlighters for the next one, we're going to look at the subtraction property. So let's take a look at what we have to start. Let's highlight an orange ABD. So ABD is this angle here. And pink EBC. And I want us to prove that ABC is congruent to EBD by the subtraction property. So now what would we have to subtract? So if we look at the left side of the, again, we're going to have to keep that congruent symbol in the middle. But what do we subtract from this angle right here to be left with just this piece? Say that again? Yep, this angle right here. We have to subtract that CBD from ABD to get EBC. Good. What do we subtract from EBC to get EBD? That's the pink angle. CBD again. So that's 
why we need angle CBD congruent to angle CBD in order to, to subtract. So that's the reflexive property. Okay, division. So let's highlight in the third one. We use three different colors. This time I'm going to highlight this statement in orange. So that's this large angle, ABC. So this hole is equal to that hole. And then it says that ABD, so this half is congruent to that half. And then um, EFH is congruent to HFG. So ray BD and ray FH must be angle bisectors. So what do we know to be true from that? If the orange angles are congruent and these green angles are congruent and the pink angles are congruent, what do you know to be true? It might help to think about it numerically. What's equal? So can you, can you state it in terms of the angles and the letters? So angle, what is congruent to angle? Say that again, louder. You say GFH, this one, is congruent to which one? So GFH is this one, which is congruent to which one? GFH. Yep, they tell us that. What can we conclude based on what they told us? Davis? OK, so let's get rid of the two stars from before. So you're saying ABD is congruent to EFH? Yeah. But, um, well, and then if that's congruent to that and that's congruent to that, isn't this also congruent to this? And then they're also, because this angle is congruent to that angle, aren't all four of those angles that are parts of the whole congruent? Yeah, and there's not, long, there's not a line long enough, and I do want to write it all left to right, so let's shift it over. So I know that angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD, which is congruent to angle EFH, which is congruent to um, angle GFH. And we're just putting these four together, if you don't want to look up here, OK? And that's because we write it halves. They were halves of congruent angles. And any half of congruent angle, they are congruent. Because I said, if you're struggling um, out, or with the givens, think of this in terms of numbers. If this was 80 degrees, it said these larger angles are congruent, so that's 80 degrees. But then I tell you that these two angles within are congruent, so it must be 40 and 40. Yeah. And then I tell you that these two angles are congruent, so they must be 40 and 40. So all four of those angles must be congruent. And then lastly, before we take a look at some parallel lines cut by a transversal, is how we use the substitution property. So see what you can conclude now if angle A is congruent to B and angle A is congruent to C. Madison? Yes, they're all three congruent, but I'm going to write angle B is congruent to C. So using the substitution property, because they tell me here that A is congruent to B, I can replace this A with its congruent angle, and now I have B congruent to C. So that's the substitution property. So throughout this unit, okay, so on your first quiz, I'm scaffolding the proofs, meaning I have the thinking there organized for you. You just will have to fill in the missing statements and reasons. 
okay? So I guide you through it. I tell you how many steps. I'll give you, say, the left side, and you fill in the right side. You know what I mean? You just go back and forth. So you have to know your properties. So day one, substitution, reflexive, and then complements of the same angle are congruent, supplements of the same angle are congruent, your angles and linear pair, okay? Now, the easy stuff because you've seen this before with two parallel lines cut by a transversal in middle school, okay? The transversal is the line, so in this case it's red and it's T, that's the line that intersects any two lines. Um, right now, these two angles that I have dots are called alternate interior because they're within those two lines and on alternating sides of the transversal. Are they congruent right now? No, why not? The lines, the blue lines, line one and two, are not parallel. So in order for those two angles to be congruent, you have to start with two parallel lines. So it says to sketch line three parallel to line two. So it has to be equidistant. I'll put the arrows on there. OK. And then, yeah, we're going to review all the names. So because we're doing proofs and explaining, you have to have the names memorized, OK? So the first pair, so anytime two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the corresponding angles are blank. So I give you some examples of corresponding angles. That is something like W and P. So according to the point of intersection, it's top left, top left. Two, if you were to slide that angle along the transversal, it would land. And not only W and P, but Y and R. So who can tell me the other two pair of corresponding angles? So I said W, P, Y, and R, they're on the same side of the transversal. So Henry, what's another? Yep. C, S, X, and Q. Now, what's true about those angles? Henry again? Yes. So the, when we talk about the angles themselves, the angles are congruent or their measures are equal. So let's put in some measures. So let's say that looks to be obtuse. We'll make it easy and call it 110. So this would be 110. And then because of vertical angles, this is also 110. And then this is 110. What would be angle x? 70 because of our linear pairs. So this is 70. Um, alternate interior, what's true about alternate interior? They're the same measure, so 70 and 70. So your only options for the angles is that they are the same measure or congruent, or their measures add up to 180 or they're supplementary. So alternate interior angles, what's the other pair besides Y and Q? Z and, it has to be between the lines, Z and P, and they are congruent. What about the alternate exterior angles? What's the other pair besides X and R? Yep. So W, S, what's true about alternate exterior angles? They are congruent. Same side interior, so what that means, so interior is right here. They have to be within the parallel lines. Same side means the same side of the transversal, so that would be like these two angles here or the other side. Are they congruent? They're supplementary. So it's either Y and P or Z and Q. And they are supplementary. Now, from the reading, so there's only one example at the bottom, but we talked about axioms, postulates, definitions. We use this corresponding angles postulate to prove all of the theorems. The format, which I would suggest you use, is a conditional statement. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. The exterior angles theorem says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. And then you can read the last one. It's as a condition because as we stated at the top of that page, those angles are not congruent unless you have parallel lines. Okay? So using that, 
are lines M and N parallel given that diagram? Yes or no? No? Good. And explain what well, we explain using this stuff, the theorems, the definitions, the postulates. So I would say something like in order for two lines cut by a transversal. to be parallel, what type of angles are those? Alternate, interior angles must be congruent. And we have 78 not equal to 76. So the measures are not equivalent, therefore those angles are not congruent. Okay, a proof. So take a look at the next one before we finish with some easy algebra. Supply the giving missing or the missing reason for the given proof. So what's the missing reason for the given proof? Why is angle 1, or no, they're telling us that. So I don't like how that's written. So if we know 1's congruent to 2, that's the given. The word given should be there with a step 2. If they tell you that, what can you conclude? Good, John. L is parallel to M. Now, this was a conclusion that I made, right? I made that conclusion. So in my reason, I can't start by saying the two lines are parallel, right? Because did I know that to start? No. So I'm going to state that when two lines are cut by a transversal using the vocab and what's the name of those angles? Begins with a C. So according to the points of intersection in the line, it's bottom right, bottom right, they are corresponding. So when two lines are cut by a transversal and the corresponding angles are congruent. So when that happens, the lines are parallel. You could state instead of when, if two lines are cut by a transversal, and then you can add the then. You could state it as a conditional, or you can use the when. It's up to you. So for the last four, I want you to take a minute, or the next two, rather. Then the last one's a little bit different. I just want you to write the equation that goes with those two angles. Are they congruent, or are they supplementary? So what is just the equation? Talk about it with the person next to you for four and five. All right, what's the equation for the first one? Yeah, John? Yes. So 
So you have conceptually, you have that right, you have your two points. What's the equation for five, Joe? Yes. Now I'll go back and solve them both. Uh, so what is x equal, what is y equal? What is x equal? Okay, 16, good. And then y? Twenty-six. Now this one said to find x, so we're done. This one says to find the measure of w x z. So w x z is this angle here. So now five times twenty-six is how many degrees? 130, good. Number six is what they often look like on the regents. State the value of x or a variable that would guarantee or prove or show that r is parallel to s. So I would suggest you highlight it. These are the two lines you want to be parallel. So what angle relationship would have to be true in order for those two lines to be parallel? If I look at the left transversal, the only angle we're given is this one. Do I have any other angle? No. Again, that's the only one. So is there an angle relationship for that transversal? No. Do we have angles along this transversal? Yeah, we're given these two. So what would have to be true about those two angles if I want those lines parallel? They'd have to be congruent or their measure has to be, their measures have to be equal. So if I subtract 3a, we get a, add 18 to 14 and we get, nope, 22. 